Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be painting up a Sloppity Bile Piper, one of the other great characters from the Magic Kin of Nurgle, or the Nurgle in general. Now we're just going to do some basic assembly. We will file off the excess flash and stuff with a razor knife. Always pre-test uh, dry fit together when you're going to assemble because these pieces for Nurgle are a little confusing at times. And then we will use super glue to uh, adhere them together. I have assembled up to the point where uh, assembly will get in the way of painting. So there's the main body with the stick, there's the bagpipes, and then there's the head, and then there's the little nurgling. And then we prepare it for priming. And while it is drying from being primed, we're going to take Liquitex uh, modeling putty and we're going to apply this all over his base. After rapidly drying it with a hair dryer, the top layer is dry and then we pat it down with a rough brush. We then take the completely primed and finished uh, model and then place it in and because it makes all the ground around it poof back up, we casually indent again uh, to add texture and to the uh, bottom piece. However, we will not let it stay overnight as we are painting it in the middle of the day. So I want to continue on with this. I'll cautiously tap, tap, tap the model in and then pull it out and leave the uh, indents there. And now we're going to do our pre-coating. We're going to start off with Pallid Witch Flesh and White Scar. And we're going to coat the entire model in Pallid Witch Flesh. And then once that is done, we're then going to dry brush White Scar White all over the model to pick out the details. And now with Castellan Green, Deathworld Force, Lamian Medium, and Plague Bear Flesh, we're going to paint the main body and every piece of his flesh. He has his hand on the bagpipes as well, and his face. So we're going to start off with two coats of Deathworld Force, mixed one to one with Lamian Medium and a bit of water. And once those are done, we then take a one-to-one -one mix of Castellan Green and Lamian Medium mixed with some water and we apply it all over. We want this thin and the water will help to make it spread easier. And once that is done, we're going to go and take Plague Bearer's Flesh and we're going to apply it into the shadow, recesses, the undersides, his butt, and other things like that. Have fun with it. So now with Skeleton Horde Contrast, Gulliman Flesh, and Magos Purple, we're going to add some more color. So we're going to start off with a little bit of watered down Skeleton Horde Contrast, and we will apply two coats of this onto the bagpipe pipes, their bones, essentially. So we will do two coats of Skeleton Horde Contrast on them. And once that is done, we're then going to take some watered down Skeleton Horde Contrast and then apply it all over his flesh. Remember he has an arm on the bagpipes and his head. And once that is done, we're then going to take and apply one layer onto the little nurgling on the side. We will end up doing two. We then go back with Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it to all the rips on his flesh. His open stomach, he has cuts everywhere else. We use this to begin a uh, base layer of color differentiation. And then we move on and apply the second coat onto the Nurgling. And now with some Gulliman Flesh, we will apply this as the base layer for his intestines. We will also uh, paint the areas around the ripped flesh to add even more color. 
We will also paint the Nurgling's tongue with this. And we will also paint the organ part of the bagpipes with one layer of Gulliman flesh. Alright, and now with Magos Purple, we will use one layer to add to the intestines. We'll apply this to some parts of all his ripped flesh. We will also apply this to the tongue of the Nurgling, as well as the mouth of, of the Jolly of the Piper. We will also use this to coat like the veins on the organ, the bagpipe thing, and as well as what looks like a large intestine along the side of the bagpipe thing. We'll end up doing two coats of Magos Purple onto the organs of the big intestines on the bagpipes. And then we finish off with adding a little more skeleton horde contrast onto the horns of the Nurgling. And now with Bestigore Flesh and Fugan Orange, we paint the boils all throughout the body. We start off with a layer of Bestigore Flesh. And I completely forgot to get footage of me applying Fugan Orange, but whatever, just apply dots and spread it out on the large places. And then we uh, highlight these marks again with Bestigore Flesh. Now with Skeleton Horde Contrast and Agrax Earthshade, we are going to paint the staff he has. And I'll actually do start off with two coats of Agrax Earthshade onto his little staff or stick thing. And then once that's done, I'm going to apply a slightly watered down layer of Skeleton Horde Contrast onto the wood to make it look more like wood. Now with Wraithbone, we're going to paint the two strips of paper that come out of his stick. And now with Eshin Grey and Dawnstone, we're going to paint the Jester head thingy here. We're going to start off with a layer of Eshin Grey. However, I then realized that it's just not as good enough or as dark as I need, so I use Nuln Oil and I just apply this all over the cloth part, the hat thing. I then go back to Eshin Grey and I paint straight lines on the ridges of his of this thing, uh, straight lines up and down along the sides, uh, along the edges, picking out all the details. I basically cover 90 to 95 percent of this entire thing. Uh, in it. Only the darkest recesses and the tears are still with Nuln Oil. And then once that's done, I'm going to take one-to-one -one Eshin Grey and Dawnstone and I am going to highlight pretty much everything, uh, maybe like 80 to 90 percent of it. Straight lines. We're using straight lines, people. I uh, draw straight lines along the top, along the sides, wherever you think you might need them, and a bunch of them to make it look more clothy. And once that's done, I'm going to take pure Dawnstone and then highlight further again on the raised areas, the edges, all straight lines. Now with Castellan Green, Xerxes Purple, and Gene Stealer Purple, we're going to paint a few things. First, with a one-to-one -one mix of Castellan Green and Xerxes Purple, I paint his veins. And I realize that he only has one vein on his right arm. I mixed too much paint for that. And then with Xerxes Purple, we're going to paint the little bag that he has over his head there. 
And then once that's done, we're going to do a one-to-one -one of Xerxes purple and Gene Stealer purple, and we're going to highlight all the edges of the bag, and we're just going to draw a bunch of straight lines on the bag to add some texture. And once that is done, we're going to take pure Gene Stealer purple, and we're going to highlight the edges of the bag, uh, the upper raised edges more specifically, so we don't obscure everything from before, and we're going to paint fine lines again. I then want to highlight even further, so I mix in a little bit of white scar white to make the, uh, the Gene Sealer purple brighter, and then I just highlight the edges and even more strips in it to make it stand out more. And now we're going to experiment. With Drakenhof Nightshade and Bealtan Green, we'll mix a one-to-one -one mix, and then we're going to end up applying two coats on the face of his stick thing. We don't want the first uh, coat to pool in, we just want it to change the color overall. And on the second coat, we let the paint pool a little more. And now with Fugan Orange and a 25.25 mm micro pen, I'm going to paint the little parchments on there. So I started with Fugan Orange onto the little parchments there, but it's too much and over encompassing. So then I go to Wraithbone and then I dry brush Wraithbone over the paper again, and that fixes it. And then I go to the micro pen and with great quality camera angles, you will see that I <laughs> draw lines onto the paper, very thin lines, just right and left. And once that is done, I'm also going to take his eye and I'm going to draw a big circle on his eye. His eye looked good enough as it was with all the mixes of inks and stuff and uh, paints on there. But in the end, this was a bad move because like you could barely see his pupil in his eye. And so, like, this was a mistake. His eye should have been much brighter for using this. Now with Steel Legion Drab, Agrax Earthshade, and Bane Blade Brown, we're going to paint the horn on his sight, or music horn. So with Steel Legion Drab as a base layer, we will then apply Agrax Earthshade all over. And then once that has dried, we will then take Steel Legion Drab again and draw straight lines on all the corners, the edges, and sort of feathering in towards the open end of the horn. And once that's done, we're going to take pure Bane Blade Brown and apply that in straight lines on the upper raised areas and the larger areas. And now with Xandri Dust and Skeleton Horde Contrast, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the little skull above the horn. We start off with a base layer of Xandri Dust. And once that has dried, we're going to take Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it all over. Make sure it's watered down a little bit. And then once that's done, we will highlight again with Xandri Dust. Pretty much 90-95% of the entire skull will be painted this. And then we will do one final layer of Skeleton Horde Contrast. Now with Mornfang Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and XV88, spoiler, I only use Mornfang Brown. I use Mornfang Brown to paint the leather straps on his side and the leather-ish straps, it could be leather, on his bagpipe things holding them together. So because the Mornfang Brown was a little watered down, it allowed the underlayer to show through. And the thing was, I didn't paint over it on accident or anything. It still had the undercoating from the very first steps of the Pallid Witch Flesh and the White Scar White. And so in the end, it naturally highlighted. So I thought, no, oh, I'll keep it. With Castellan Green, I'm going to copy the box art and I will paint all his fingernails and toenails this color.
And now with Mornfang Brown and XV88, I'm going to paint these uh, strings, ropes on his stick thing, the hat. I'm going to start out with just a base layer of Mornfang Brown on these ropes. They're on the, like, I don't know, the pigtails or the metal chimes right there and along the top of the forehead. And then I'm just going to highlight it with a simple line of XV88. Quick, simple. Now with Baylor Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and Zamasi Desert, we're going to paint his spine. How this is going to work is we're going to start off with a base layer of Baylor Brown. Then we will apply Agrax Earthshade all over for extra depth. We don't want it to pull too much. And then once that's done, we're going to paint Baylor Brown back over the spine. But how we're going to do it is, is we're going to paint it sort of like into an eye. And then when we get to Zamasi Desert, we will paint a very fine eye, like a straight line up top, a straight line in the center, and a straight line at the bottom for each spinal piece. And now with Corn Red, Wazdaka Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint his hat. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a base layer of Corn Red all over. Once that is done, we're going to take Wazdaka Red and we're going to paint probably 90-95% to of the entire thing in it. And once that is done, we're then going to do fine lines of Evil Sun Scarlet along the edges, the ridges, we'll paint fine lines along the sides, and such and such, and pick out like the folds. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh, Magos Purple, and Drakenhof Nightshade, we're going to paint his tongue. We're going to start off by applying Pallid Witch Flesh to any spot that has been touched by any other paints and stuff, refortifying it. And once that is done, we're going to take Drakenhof Nightshade and apply it from the mouth down to, like, two-thirds of the tongue. And once that is done, we're going to take Magos Purple and we're going to apply one layer on the last bottom part of the tongue. And once those are both dry, we will take one thin layer of Magos Purple and apply it all over the tongue. So it'll mix with the blue, and then it'll uh, concentrate on the bottom. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh and Skeleton Horde Contrast, we will paint the one and only one maggot on this entire model, which is on his stick somehow. So with a layer of Pallid Witch Flesh as our base, we then apply Skeleton Horde Contrast on top, and then when that's dry, we then do with a very fine brush, highlight the individual rings on this one single maggot. And now we're going to take AK Interactive Ultra Matte and we're going to apply this all over the model and the bagpipe and the little nerdling. And now with Lead Belcha, Agrax Earthshade, Niho, Niho with this Oxide color, and Ryza Rust, we are going to paint all his metal pieces. Now we're going to apply Lead Belcha onto the middle circle on his stick. He has these anklets, and the bagpipes have like uh, this metal piece on it. We're going to focus on that. And once that is done, we're going to apply Agrax Earthshade to the metal piece on the bagpipes, as well as to the metal ring on his, uh, what you call it, on the staff, as well as the uh, metal pieces that are on the end of those tassels. We're not going to paint Agrax Earthshade onto the anklets, no real reason. And then when that's dry with riser rust, we're going to apply it all over these extra places. We're not going to touch the anklets anymore. We're just going to apply it in random dots and dry brushing onto the metal pieces we are painting. 
And once that is done, we're going to take the knee, the, the oxide color and just apply it in small dots here and there, just to add a little more flavor. So with Warp Lock Bronze and Balthazar Gold, we're going to paint the bronze pieces. So with the Warp Lock Bronze, we're going to start as the base layer. He has these bells on his helmet, or hat, as well as the center pieces for those uh, tassels on his stick, as well as the mouthpiece he has on his bagpipes. And once that's done, we're going to take Balthazar Gold and we're going to highlight pretty much 90-95% to of all those bells and stuff. Everything we painted with Warplock Bronze with Balthasar Gold. Also, his little anklets have bells as well, so paint those too. Now, I realize that the color just doesn't pop, so I'm going to take some Brass Scorpion and I'm going to apply it onto all the final brass areas. The rings of every single uh, bell, uh, here and there, like some taps here and there, just to add like a light shiny dot onto his metal pieces, his bronze pieces. And now with Baylor Brown, we are going to paint the his the areas around the feet of him and his nerglings to match my base uh, color scheme. I then take super glue and then I, well, start to assemble the model. This is a, a little tricky as the model is a little hard to put together. It's actually very rough to put together. Uh, the bagpipes are very stiff so you kind of have to really jam them in there. And so this was a difficult process. Things kept falling apart and such and such. But oh well, uh, I would put the bagpipes on first and then the head second but there's kind of a gap. It's a little difficult to manage. but. And then I glued the models onto the base. And now with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, we're going to apply this on all the wet spots. We're going to apply this on his tongue, the intestines spilling out, the bag pipes themselves, uh, all of his boils, uh, the tongue on the nurgling, and just any spot that you think should be shiny because it's wet. And now with Caliban Green, Nurgle's Rot, Bombay Yellow India Ink, and Blood for the Blood God, we're going to finish it, uh, finish the model. With Caliban Green, we're going to paint this drop of stuff coming out of the bagpipes. With Nurgle's Rot and Bombay Yellow Ink, we're going to mix it together one to one, and then we're going to apply it as the Nurgle's Rot on the base, as well as on the dot of Caliban Green to make it look like uh, more Nurgle's Rot. And then we're going to go with Blood for the Blood God, and we're going to apply a thin layer. We don't want it to, like, to sit. We want a thin layer of it on all his open sores, wounds, parts of his intestines, parts of the nurglings, stomach that's ripped open. A thin layer. And he is done. Well, I... Pretty fun character. I'm really enjoying all these Nurgle characters. They're full of color and life. I'm really enjoying it. So, interesting thing as far as rating it. If I was just to rate his little stick and staff up there, I would say 10 out of 10. I really like it. It's awesome. But with the whole model together, and some things didn't work out as they did. His hat isn't as good as the rest of certain areas and stuff. Uh, honestly, I'd have to give it an 8 out of 10. Like, there was a lot that was good. It's mostly the staff that's pulling it up. I'd feel it's kind of a 7, but that staff like, did so well. It's like, yeah, that's a... It's pulling it up. Also, very importantly, that Nurgling. Uh, this color scheme on the Nurgling is going to be for a very big project later. But now I've confirmed that it actually looks like it and it's good here. So that's good to know. This project was very fun. It was a little difficult to assemble. I do final assembly. He's really cool. The staff looks really great. I'm really happy with that Drakenhof Nightshade and Bealtan Green mix. It looks wonderful. The pre-coating really comes out. You can see all the detail on this character. You can see all the ridges and pieces of his flesh everywhere. It was a fun model. Alright, 
like the video if you like the video, share if you want to share it, uh, like it if you like it, dislike it if you disliked it, comment on anything you want to nitpick or say, and see you soon. More to come.